In Throne and Liberty there are certain things you should be doing on the daily and in this video I bring you that list you may not know of. Daily chores are something that can make progress tick and luckily for players who ain't sure I have you covered today. How's it going guys my name is DPJ now I'm away until November 5th so my videos from October 20th are all scheduled. But I'm still doing those loose sync giveaways when I return just after the 5th of November I'll pick multiple winners from the comments section of my Throne and Liberty videos and announce them then so to win it's as simple as this drop a like on the video leave me a comment down below and make sure you are subbed the more I see you active the more of a chance you have of winning so good luck everybody so those daily chores in Throne and Liberty 100% help progression the fact that the game limits you on what you can do do daily states that you should be taking advantage of what's on offer here so let's get into it guys and first up donating to your guild and getting those guild tokens so having a guild and donating to it whether that be solon or resources is another great way for you to earn guild coin which is a vital currency you should be working with donating to your guild on a daily should be a thing you 100 percent are doing at a minimum now using those guild coins which you get for donating guys you can buy certain items from the guild merchant there are loads here which have a daily limit on them also so you definitely want to be buying what's important here due to that daily limit basis another thing you want to be doing or doing at least once a day is sending out your anatoys on those expeditions now you can do this multiple times per day but it's great for those vital materials used for crafting, cooking etc etc. I like to send mine out on an 8 hour expedition overnight while I sleep but while I'm on throughout the day I send them on those 1 hour expeditions, maybe 2 hours, it just depends. But this is all great for levelling up those Anatoi, I meaning you can basically send them on expeditions in harder areas getting you better materials. So do these on a daily guys, level it up and get better loot as a reward. So another thing you want to be doing on a daily are those resistance contracts. These are great for getting extremely useful materials for things like crafting. Now depending on what you want these for, you should be looking to do contracts with different contract merchants. The Watcher's Outpost contract merchant gives you the most contract coins per each one you complete. His contracts can also give you those rare polished crystals too. You can also get magic powder from these or and you also get abyssal contract tokens too which are used within those open world dungeons. Now with contracts you are given 10 contract rights per day. Once you are done with the contract rights and you've run them down to zero you have to wait for that daily refresh to get 10 more. Now the contract rights will stack over 6 days meaning you can get back up to 60 so that's cool too. So doing those daily contracts you get those contract coins and while you should be using these contract coins on a daily basis at least. So come to the contract coin merchant and you can see he has those mystic keys. These are something you want to be grabbing at least 5 times per week. So that's grabbing all 5 at least 5 times a week. For that weekly mission for one which we'll discuss later but these mystic keys will open up the opportunity for players to interact with portals which can appear in and around the map uh, leading you to get even more vital materials. Now the contract coin merchant also has other vital materials you may want to consider. If you like fishing you should be buying that bait. I mean there's no harm in buying and stacking the bait every so often even if you ain't fishing yet. It's still a good thing to get. But yes go through the contract coin merchant stock he does have quite a few items limited by the day next up guys cooking so cooking in this game if you ain't already aware of uh, isn't really considered a daily chore or anything like this but certain items you can only buy limited of on a daily basis so coming to the sundry's merchant you can see certain foods and ingredients are limited to you buying them on a daily basis now these only cost gold so I'd stack these up even if you ain't cooking as of right now. Now cooking in this game is something massively important. Um, the things you can cook and craft will help you buff yourself, especially during that end game. So something I definitely suggest you invest time in. Another thing you're limited to doing daily are those co-op dungeons. You're limited because you are only given 900 dimensional tokens per day. These are used within those co-op dungeons meaning you get loot from them. 
and obviously these co-op dungeons are one of the game's main in-game loot resource. So the level 50 co-op dungeons will require you to have 300 of these dimensional tokens, meaning the 900 they give you per day that they limit you to per day, you can only run through these level 50 co-op dungeons. Lower level dungeons do require less of these tokens, but if you are at a level 50, you want to be trying to get to and aiming to complete the level 50 co-op dungeons. And again, they give you 900 of these dimensional tokens per day, so that's only three runs of the level 50 co-op dungeons. Now, these tokens will stack up to 4,500, so you can go a few days without using them and without missing out, so keep that in mind. Another thing you can do on a daily are those world bosses and those dynamic events. Although these ain't required for you to do on a daily, they are limited so if there's something you're chasing from these, you're limited to how many you can do per day. Just check the schedule on what one you want but remember these can be peaceful and conflict zones. Conflict means PvP which is just one massive stun fest. Uh, the peaceful ones are the ones I go to but yes world bosses even at a bare minimum of you just taking part in them you still get a chest which can be award you a special resistance medal which if you stack 40 of these as well you can get a lithograph to craft another epic piece so do keep that in mind okay so let's quickly look at a few weekly things you want to be doing in throne and liberty firstly those allied resistance forces contracts so these contracts are purchased from the sundry's merchant we have two different types of them the lazland and stone guard contracts and the Tade or tower contracts so the Lazaland and Stolgard contracts, you can purchase up to 6 per week of these, but each one you purchase gives you 4 of these contracts, so that's 24 of these specific allied resistance forces contracts you can do per week. Now each one you do complete guys gives you an abyss currency, if you stack 40 of these you can purchase an epic chest from those crafting vendors, you also get 37 contract coins per each one you complete here and you also get a precious blessing pouch for each one of these contracts you do complete which can reward you various different loot. Now again these always take place in those open world dungeons though so do keep that in mind. The Tado Tower versions of these contracts reward you that precious ore and those training dues. These are used to apply XP to your weapon mastery, so definitely worth your time in doing these guys. Again, these are limited to how many you can do them per week. Another thing you may want to be doing on that weekly basis is this game's 3v3 PvP arena mode. So this is a mode that unlocks upon you reaching a level 50, but upon you doing this guys, you can enter that arena mode. Uh, here you can bag yourself 6 of those arena coins per week, but you are limited to 6 per week. Uh, you need to be successful in these games of 3v3 PvP, and upon you doing this guys, you can then purchase things from the arena merchants. Stacking 9 over 2 weeks of the arena coins means you can purchase yourself an epic item. Another weekly chore you want to be investing in is the weekly missions. These weekly missions allow you to complete challenges over the week which reward you the opportunity to select a random epic item. Now you don't have to do all of these challenges, just a few, each one reveals another epic. Now you only get to select one epic from all of these challenges, so if you do all 12 of these challenges guys, you still only get to select one of the epics, but obviously the more of these challenges you do, the more of a chance you view you land in that epic that you do indeed want. But again, these are limited to a weekly basis, but some real, real easy ones to do here. The Mystic Keys, which we spoke about earlier, Co-op Dungeons, uh, the Resistance contracts guild rep etc etc so yes this may be something guys you want to be spending that time doing okay so lastly guys we'll check out a certain thing you need to be paying attention to on a monthly basis and that is the ornate coin shop so this section of the shop sells items for ornate coins which you get from the devs every other day via your mail and you also get three ornate coins per random purple page you find in and around the map now these do quickly add up if you go to your shop section, scroll down to the ornate coins section, you'll see that there's quite a few amazing and important items you want to be buying here, but you are limited to how many you can buy per month. Trade extraction zones, precious blessing pouches, growth stones, growth books, and much more like enchanted ink and even fishing bait. So yes, it's definitely something you want to be keeping an eye on and be spending those materials if you've got them stacked up in may as well because again you'll lose out if it resets and you haven't purchased the important items here 
But there we have it guys, your daily, weekly and monthly chores for Thrawn and Liberty. If you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps out. If you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. And hopefully guys, I will see you on that next one.